This video will be an ultimate guide for Spirit Checker Decidueye. We will not talk about Razor Leaf whatsoever in this video. It will only be about Spirit Checker. Decidueye is a ranged attacker who deals insane amounts of damage from very far away, but also very squishy and can go down very fast. It's mainly played in central area due to not having the best early game. You can play it in top or bot path, but only if you have an experienced XP shareholder with you. So someone who can get last hits, secure last hits, and hopefully also have XP share, so you can get to level 7 very fast. For head items, we run Muscle Band, Attack Band, and Floatstone Muscle Band, just to help us clear white Pokemon fast. That also helps against Rayquaza, it helps against Regis, and in general just helps us clear white Pokemon much, much faster. Attack weight, because the Sidrui on Spirit Shackle has a lot of scalings, on the spirit checkers, so if you get attack rate stacks in your spirit checker, we do a lot more damage. But even then, even if you don't have stacks, it's still good enough. You can still win without having any attack rate stacks. It's nothing you should focus on going throughout the game. Either it happens or it doesn't, but don't put a ton of vision on stacking this attack rate up. And for last, we have Floatstone, which I talk about later on why this is the third best item in this. I can't explain it right now very much. I want to showcase the you know I the moves first and then explain why Floatstone is the third best item. Then for battle item, we pretty much always go eject button. Nothing else really makes any sense. X speed is also fine, so X speed or eject button is totally okay. And for emblems, we will go for this page right here. Just any, just any attack minus special attack page. You don't even have to go HP. You can stack as much attack if you want in this page as well. And then six brown and six white emblems, of course. We start the game off as Rowlet, and for our basic attacks, they're pretty similar to Garchomp, but we should showcase right now. You build up a boost out attack, and after getting to four basic attacks, they turn into this right here, where you do three at the same time. They do less damage than the normal basic attack, but in general increases your damage by a good amount. And then we have Rowlet's passive, or the Sidrise passive. The further you're away from the target, you do 20% more damage. So right here, my basic attack has 189 damage. If I step over here, 226. And the range is around here. You can see if I do go here again, 189. If I step over here, 226. So it's about the range you have to be away from your target to do 20% bonus damage. Then we have to the two basic moves, Leverage and Astonage. Leverage is a cone damage or a cone AoE of damage in front of you. We just use it. This will be your last hitting tool in case you go for laning. If you go for top or bot path, you will try to last it with this. This will also be your last hitting tool on your first gank if you decide to go central area, which again, I would recommend the most. And after using this, we gain attack damage and a bit of attack speed as well. Then Astonish, we just point and click our opponents, and they get slowed by 80% for a bit. It's not all too great, but the slow can still come in quite handy. On level 5, we get our first evolution, and sadly, we don't get a single move to choose from. We just get level 5, we get more stats, and that's it. And this is why the Sidra is one of the worst level 5 Pokemon in the entire game. It's quite, quite weak, so you have to be very, very careful when you, yeah, you try to go for your level 7. After level 7, we become very strong already, but between 5 or like 1 and 7, you are super, super weak. So then we hit level 7, we're going to pick our Spirit Shaker right here, and Spirit Shaker works this way. You just have to charge it up. And then your range increases, your damage increases, and we can shoot it out and do damage. It's a very long range skill shot, and it can hold up up to three charges. And after using one, you have a two second cooldown in between charges as well. And the longer you charge it up, the more damage it does up to this. You can see there's like a line, right? You can see there's a line. If we go for this line, then uh, we do our max damage. Right now you can see this was one... 1623 damage we go to the line 1981 the range doesn't really matter too much because again the 20 percent is not that far away so even if i step further away now we'll still be 1981 damage we can also kind of quick scope it like if we go close we can always do this doesn't do a lot of damage but still a good amount of burst and you can see that if we walk you know this is the distance right here so it all depends on how long you charge it up and of course only the distance for your passive which is around here so, you know, if we step here, 1,100, it's still already in range 916, so it's still the same range as Rowlet. So, yeah, we charge it up, and we always want to try to charge it up as to the, to the, you know, line that is, that you can see under the HP bar. Once we cross the line, we kind of want to shoot it. If we don't do anything right now, the damage will not be increased or anything, and after, you know, it's going to time out eventually. Also, we're going to leave this area on top of, like, on bottom of our opponents. You can see there's the area, like, there's the arrow now stuck in our opponents. And if they move out of it, they will actually get slowed and take damage if they activate it. So if they step out of this circle, they take damage and they get slowed. And they only this only happens once we reach the maximum charge. So if you just do it like this, this will not happen. And this is another reason why we always want to make sure we hit this first line to maximize our Spirit Shackle damage. On level 8, we pick up Shadow Sneak, which is going to be very useful. Leaf Storm is alright, but Shadow Sneak is what makes Spirit Shackle so strong of a move as well. So we activate it, 
And for now we have a shadow that's going to sneak out to the nearest opponent. You don't even have vision on them. If they're in tall grass, if it's this, seek out the opponent. I mean, I can showcase that as well right now if I just do this very fast. Um, if it's seek out any opponent that is very, very close, which is very, very cool. So you can always be kind of safe. So there's no bush right now. I mean, we can still see it, but it's still going to seek out to the target once we level up. And it does multiple things. First, it slows our opponents. And then it also reduces their defense stats by 60%, which means our spirit checker does a lot of more damage. If we are too far away from one of our opponents, the shadow will stay around us until we get close enough for an opponent and it's going to seek it out. You can also use it against white Pokemon, but then really nothing has to be around. So like now I'm going to do Shadow Sneak, I'm going to attack this and it's going to seek out to the white Pokemon eventually. But yeah, if anyone is around, it will always go towards our opponents. It also gives us move speed, as you can see right here, if we press it, we get very fast. And this is why you don't need X speed necessarily, because you're only kind of fast. That's why you kind of just run a eject button, because this is kind of like a, you know, shorter version of X speed, which has a much lower cooldown. So you can always just use it also to escape scenarios. On level 9, we get our Unite move, which actually has the highest cooldown the entire game. So you have to make sure that you use it smartly and not just waste it because it has a 150 second cooldown, which is quite ridiculous. So, what it does is, we're gonna stand still, we're gonna start shooting all these arrows into the direction. You can see it between those two lines, we do damage. And after a while, it does this final hit that does also extra damage if targets are below half HP. And yeah, we're gonna be unstoppable, so we can only get stopped by something like, you know, slow Knight or something. Otherwise, we cannot be stopped because we're fully unstoppable. And you can also stop it earlier and get move speed from it. So we can always just also use it as defensive tool, though. Like, we can activate Unite move, we can cancel it, and as soon as you cancel it, or as soon as it ends, you get a boost of move speed, as you can see right here. We're, like, glowing in this bluish thing, and as long as you have this on, we have, you know the new speed bonus on. But as a matter what, it does actually a lot of damage. People really underestimate how much this does. It does really do a lot of damage. On level 11, we pick up Spirit Checker Plus, which gives us 15% more damage to targets under 50% HP. So also quite nice. Also works against, you know, white Pokemon. It works against anything. So it also helps us, you know, maybe getting some last hits in. Quite, quite nice. And then we also have Shadow Sneak Plus on level 13, which increases the defense reduction from 60 to 80%. So none. We just get straight up damage increase from our plus versions. Also talking about the Floatstone now. So the Floatstone doesn't get actually activated once we charge up Spirit Checker. So Spirit Checker actually slows us down as well by charging it. And this Floatstone is going to help us not to be slowed down as much. As soon as we shoot an iron hit a target, of course, the Floatstone is going to go away. Um, but you can see the difference, right? Right now I'm pretty slow. As soon as Floatstone comes back up, I'm actually quite, quite fast again. This is why we like Floatstone in this build as well, and why I would recommend playing it. But yeah, you can always just shoot it out, wait for it to come up again, and sometimes it just helps us at the start of a team fight to maybe, you know, keep our distance to opponents and hit our Spirit Checker or First Spirit Checker much, much easier. Besides that, Spirit Checker, the situation plays pretty straightforward. You want to use, if you have no vision on your opponents, you want to use your Spirit Checker, uh, your Shadow Sneak, you scout around. If it flies to an opponent, we're going to charge up our Spirit Checker. And besides that, we just pretty much, we don't basic attack a lot. It's not very uh, basic attack heavy Pokemon when it comes to team fights. We pretty much just use Shadow Sneak, sneak on opponent, hit our Spirit Checker, stay far away again, charge up our next Spirit Checker, and we're just going to try to aim those as good as we can. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to go over some gameplay now as well to fully explain how it's supposed to be played. As I mentioned, the Sidra is one of the worst early game Pokemon in the entire game, so it's very important to get use of the first gank. You can't really get KOs all too much. You kind of just want to make sure you gank a lane the way you can get, maybe get some Itaria in. Right now I see the Zora rocking here, so I'm just going to try to catch up to the Zora. And yeah, you just want to make sure that you just kind of maybe get some experience and you don't want to be too aggressive. Here we get a nice first KO. Doesn't really give all too much experience, but still a good start, because as soon as we reach level 7, we are very good to go. So we also don't want to greet for a stack necessarily. Of course, one of them is dead right now, so I'm going to try to maybe see this away with my leverage. But as you can see, even with the leverage on level 5, it really doesn't do all too much damage. Um, I'm not greeting for any stacks. Again, we don't focus on stacks unless we can really secure them. If we die right here, trying to maybe stack up, it can stop very fast for opponents as well. We are the highest level Pokemon right now, so if we go down, um, it's very bad news for us. So just going back to the central area. Gonna try to get our level 7 as fast as possible. I'm gonna clear the entire jungle, uh, you know, jungle up here, and then we head towards mid for the Itaria spawn. And in those, we wanna stay far away and hopefully have our spell check ready to get some of them in. Can fast forward a tiny bit right here as well. So, level 7 achieved right here. We didn't really get, uh, like, it was pretty straightforward. We just got some XP here. We just wanna try to find XP somewhere if we can. 
um, give my cup with the level the bite right here. I'm going to try to stay far away. I'm going to use the spirit checker first. You can see we already do a lot of damage. And we don't want to walk up too far. Though. We always want to keep our distance, even to white Pokemon, to make sure that we don't get engaged on. I'm using quick spirit checker. It's absolutely fine. I see Zoroark now ganking on top again, looking for him, charging up my spirit checker, and we hit him. And are we going to charge up the next one? We try to be patient, try to understand where he wants to juke or walk to. It's always very important for, like, um, you know, skill shot characters to understand where your opponent might be walking to. You will just do a quick spirit checker. Because you don't always have to charge them, especially if they're very low in HP. You can just do a quick, quick scope. And we get our first stack right here. Sadly, our Mewtwo with XP share is going to break the goal right here. Otherwise, I could have maybe gotten some more stacks. And in general, again, clearing a goal this early game or this early into the game is not quite, quite good. So now I just got a stack after getting some chaos. And that's kind of how you want to play it. Again, you don't want to suicide as a central area Pokemon for attack rate stacks. If you play Decidueye in bot path, you can sometimes kind of do it. You can die for your stacks early game. Not all too important, though. And yeah. I would not recommend dying too often because it's also going to make your teammates <laughs> very upset. So in here, I'm just going to do some quick spirit checkets just because my auto attacks do a lot as well. So I don't really have to fully charge it up all the time. Here we charge it up to the middle and you can see that he got hit by the fully charged up spirit checker. And there was that, uh, you know, the thing on the ground that if he walks out of, he gets slowed as well. And now we get another stack right here. And in this scenario, we, this is now the dream scenario. See, it just comes to you at some point. If you have a good game or if, you, if you're getting chaos left and right, maybe... It slowly will come to you. Sadly, now I do the mistake right here. I thought I would be totally fine going for another stack. And here I just completely grieve now. And that's something you should not be doing. So always are good to showcase things that you shouldn't be doing. I just talked about this, how you shouldn't read for stacks out too much. Um, and then, you know, I just got Shadow Cloud perma stunned. I tried to maybe eject button, but I couldn't quite do it. Uh, Moshifa, of course, could have helped me out. But in the end, that's completely on me. Walking back to bot now. Looking for this um, Reggie. The situation is also insane at securing last hits on objectives because he has so much range and low damage on the spirit checker you can see you can also miss them quite hard sometimes always want to stay back now we hit our spirit checker always try to follow up opponents as well if one of your allies stuns them right it's easy follow up here i'm walking a bit too close but my you know i'm quite confident with my defender around to walk up and even basic attack a bit so the first time i really basic attack here i do a unite move into eject button into very quick spirit checker i use the move speed from my unite move to also sidestep um, from the Talonflame fly, of course, he missed it, and we know the quick scope. So again, in this in this fight, yeah, I might have mocked it. Here, I think I'm walking up way too much, so like, I should be still in this bush right here. I should be in this bush. I could auto-attack from there, but I was confident that we can just walk up, and I kind of wanted to maybe get another stack in, even while fighting. It's totally fine if you're outnumbering. And we hit a nice spirit check here on the Zorak, who was jumping us, and he goes down. And now we get, uh, we just get Greninja Unite move right here, and I'm using my Unite move to counter his Unite, because my Unite gives me Unstoppable, I don't get stunned by the Greninja Unite, right, as you can see. Then I cancel it, and I, I cancel it early. I eject button across the wall, and I get move speed as well from my cancellation of my Unite move. Then I basic attack and quick scope him one more time. Just I instantly press spirit checker. You can see it's going to get him right here. And I'm going to use the move speed to sidestep the Talonflame fly, which I mean it's still on him that he missed it, but I tried my best to dodge it. And we're just going to start basic attacking him with our rep buff. The rep buff is the only thing that actually makes us even good in early game as well. Because the rep buff gives us an attack speed slow, which allows us to kite him. Use Shadow Sneak to get vision on him. I dodge away from the flame charge with the move speed as well. And we're going to try to keep our distance, walk in this direction, keep applying basic attacks. I'm just waiting for my spirit checker to come back up. It's almost up there. And then we just quick scope him as well. Like if we charge it up right here, he's going to catch up auto attackers. And if he dies, we just click spirit checker one quick time. And he goes down. We get a quarter KO. Sadly, we go down to the Cinderace in the end. But our Shifu was also able to get the Red Eyes during this entire duration. So still quite, quite worth it, of course, getting four KOs. That's a bit of the thought process right there. So you can even do some close combat fighting with your Quick Scope Spirit Checker. I just, I just like calling it Quick Scope. I mean, it kind of is a Quick Scope, right? Not really, but I uh, <laughs> just, just a click, a button press. That's absolutely fine. And um, we're on our way to level 30 now, which is also a huge power spike. Just reducing enemy defense stats will always increase your damage by a good amount. So we are doing insanely well now. We have four attack rate stacks, which I'm totally happy about at this point. I don't necessarily want to focus on my last two attack rate stacks. I have so much experience. I have four attack rate stacks. I'm very good to go. Here, always staying far away, hitting a spirit check or trying to do a spirit check. I'm walking away again. We always try to walk away after every single spirit check. And if someone gets done in front of us, of course, we can basic attack. But you can see my focus is not on basic attacking all too much, right? It's very, very difficult to walk up and auto attack as soon as you auto attack, especially against a Tano Flame or Zorak, you can go down very, very fast. Um, pick up Rapper right here. I'm always doing Shadow Sneak pretty much on cooldown to scout around right here. You can see me. I'm walking close to this bush with my Shadow Sneak to see if anyone is in here, if anyone is around. Um, 
So I always kind of use it to just scout tall grass again. It's going to fly to someone in tall grass. And um, I kind of see in this scenario, I'm just waiting now. I'm not walking to this bush until my shadow sneak is back up. And then we use it again. No one is around. And yeah, we're just going to just did one bite toy here to get my unite move back up for this potential fight. I'm going to try to stay behind our defender now. Just going to activate the unite move early right here. We take down the scyther. Again, I get the Gunja unite move. I do the same thing again. I cancel my, my stuff and run back to the right side. Going to use spirit checker from very far away now. And I gained a lot of distance again. So another team fight where just canceling Unite move gives me so much distance with the Jack button that I can actually get away. Another Shadow Sneak right here. And uh, the Sinais can't even go for me because I'm so fast. And I just patiently snipe them from over here. We hit a nice double Spirit Checker. And we get two more KOs on Zorak and uh, Sinais with one Spirit Checker. I'm level 14 already. It's actually an insane Decidui game. Um, not, not all of them will go like this. Use a quick spirit check to secure the last hit right here. Tunnel Flame flies in. He's going to fly back out and try to hit a spirit check. But he's a bit too far away. Again, using Shadow Sneak to see if anyone is in this bush. I'm just going to activate my Shadow Sneak right here to see if someone is in there. I'm just a double team. And Good Ninja though, of course. I get jumped on by the Scyther. It's actually quite unfortunate I played against so many speedsters this game. They actually had a lot of things to jump me on. So I have to be very, very careful on how I position. Looking for the Cinder Ace, charging it up, and you can see doing it off damage, activating it, just walking up for a basic attack. Often you can just finish someone off with a basic attack as well. Now the Spirit Check is charged up. We hit the Greninja, and uh, yeah, we take our time to aim as well. Now we have to recall the I'm level 15. If I go down now, they would get a lot of experience, so I kind of have to play it safe. Trying to catch up with the Shadow Sneak towards the Tunnel Flame, but he gets a bit too much distance. So, gonna be careful. I see the Zorak here now, and now I'm just like, oh my god, now you have to be careful. He's actually night moving me. I'm gonna basic attack. I'm gonna use my Shadow Sneak. And that was kind of risky, though. You can see he's level 12 from 15 and still quite close of a fight. Um, I blindly followed my Mute right here, and I didn't pay attention to the toy grass that Zorak was running on. And I just kind of just try to disengage from this. I start basic attacking a tiny bit because I have to fight this. I cannot run away, right? My jack button is six seconds. I have no Shadow Sneak up. I have to fight him, so I start basic attacking. I try to kite him towards the top side. And then I use another quick spirit checker, shadow sneak, try to dodge away from his feint attack, which I do successfully. And then I take him down with a basic attack. Luckily, because I'm 15, my basic attacks actually do good amount of damage as well. No scenarios, you will still be basic attacking if you can. Um, but yeah, they didn't pay too much attention. There's another very unfortunate thing that happens in this game as well that I think is a good learning lesson for anyone who wants to learn the Sidrui when it comes to Rayquaza. Um, right now, I'm just kind of farming my Unite move back up. You can see it's still such a high cooldown. Following up my Mewtwo right here, auto-attacking, auto-attacking, auto-attacking. And you can see that enemies are very angry right now. Another Unite move being used right here. I'm going to lifesteal on the blue buff. I'm going to try to hit blue buff and Sinais at the same time, which I do. And then we take it down as well. 16 chaos already in this game now. And so, yeah, it's still very difficult though. They have Zoroark, they have Greninja Unite, Scyther Unite, uh, Talon Flame. It's very easy for me to get off on. Using a Shadow Sneak from here because I feel quite safe next to my Defender Pokemon. But instantly, as I see Zorak, I'm going to move back again, try to hit my Spirit Shackles, I hit Scyther. And in these scenarios, like in late game, if you hit a Spirit Shackle on one, you can kind of always just instantly unite move and try to follow someone up and try to just take someone down. So in this scenario, we take down the Scyther. We do miss a lot right here in the end, but another Spirit Shackle gets the KO. We have Ushifu going for this Rayquaza now. I'm just trying to get some more KOs and maybe I'll get them lower at least. I said he can't hit the Sinais right here, another quick scope. But you can see how often, I think a lot of people don't do this enough on Spirit Shacket as a dry, how often I just click my Spirit Shacket one time to just secure KOs, right? And just secure uh, easy damage. Because if you do it very fast, it's very easy for them or like for you to hit it. Much harder for the enemies to react on it. If you charge it up, the opponents see it coming, right? And if you just do it quick, um, they don't see it coming. So in this scenario, this is a good example of you have to be very careful, right? Spirit Shacket is something you have to charge up. So if you go for last hits on objectives, you have to be careful not getting stunned. And right now you can see, which was very difficult to see, but down here you can see the Rayquaza stun. The Rayquaza tornado down here, this red area. And I didn't quite see it because I was paying attention. I was tunnel visioning on like this HP bar, right? And the tunnel flame to make sure I get the Rayquaza last hit. So I kind of sidestep back into the Rayquaza stun, which stops my spirit shackle. And now I can't last hit it. Luckily, my allies still get it. Or I get it with a basic attack, actually. So this is something you have to be very careful about when you go for last hitting on Reggies, on Rayquaza, that you don't get stunned. Especially on something like Reggie Rock as well. Reggie Rock, if it drops a rock on your head, <laughs> you just get stunned, right? So Rayquaza as well. If you see those tornadoes, you're going to make sure you pay attention to them, which is very difficult, right? Like, I think it's very normal for anyone to, like, be targeting the Rayquaza HP right here. And I think because my camera, see, like, it's so difficult to see right now. 
and I was just like I was looking for the tunnel flame, I was looking for the Avaquas HP, and I the tornado just stuns me, and I could have lost the game right here because of it. So very good learning lesson, I think, for me as well to pay more attention when I charge up my spirit checker to understand if I get stunned, I might not be able to get the last hit in, right? Which we do. Now we've got to be a bit careful. It's still not over quite yet. When you jackpot across Scyther. And let me just get the score in. And now, yeah, I mean, now, now the game is pretty much over. So, here we can miss a quick spirit checker. It's going to kite him, take him down. But yeah, it was still a pretty fun game in the end. It doesn't matter what I think. And it was a good showcase. We had 21 KOs and a good amount of damage as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide. If you like my ultimate guides, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel and check out my other ultimate guides.